Grandparents can be important figures in children's lives. And I know for me, one of my very first paranormal experiences was actually seeing the ghost of my grandfather. So in this episode of True Paranormal Stories, we want to focus on stories that involve seeing the ghost of your grandfather. Hope you enjoy the show. From being very young, my brother and I always experienced things that we knew were not normal. But of course, our grandparents, who we lived with since as long as we can remember, brushed it off as childish imagination. As we grew up, we saw less and less unusual happenings. It all began when I was about 15 years old. My brother at the time was 17, and our grandfather passed away. My entire family reported seeing him the night after he passed away. My family has its skeptics, and it has its believers, and every one of them reported seeing him, laughing and looking much younger and healthier than they had ever remembered. He smiled at them all and said goodbye. Now, my brother and I, we had not seen this, so we brushed it off as their subconscious projecting an image that they wanted to see. Of course, we were believers, but we thought that if anyone would have seen him, it would have been us, for we had been there with him when nobody else had been. Well, our thoughts became reality one night, around five months later. My brother and I were up in his room playing on the PC. My grandmother was out, and my little sister was in bed. My grandfather always liked his music and always had it on extremely loud. We were laughing at something on the internet when John Lennon's Imagine began playing very loudly downstairs. At first, we thought it was a cruel joke by our neighbors. This particular song had been his first choice to be played at his cremation. So I, being the braver of us, stormed downstairs to find that it was indeed coming from the office room that was my grandfather's. I walked into his old room to find it freezing. There was no windows on, open, and the CD player was not on, but the music was still going. Then there was a knock on the back door, and the music stopped. My brother was downstairs now, and we thought that it must be one of our neighbors knocking at the door to complain about the music. So he unlocked and opened the door, and he froze, his face pale. I could tell that something was wrong. I looked outside to see nothing, but still, incredibly shaken by the music, I slammed the door and locked it, turned every light in the house on, bar my sister's room, of course, because she was sleeping, and sat downstairs waiting for my grandmother. To this day, my brother will not tell me what he saw outside, but I doubt it was the friendly spirit of my grandfather coming to say goodbye. The reason I believe this is because the morning after, my little sister said, Do you believe in ghosts? I didn't react and really asked why. She then replied that the night before, Grandpa had been in her room when she was crying about his passing, telling her to shush and that everything was going to be okay, and that he was happy. My neighbors, who were always really quick to complain, never mentioned anything about loud music coming from our house, so I really want to know why only we heard the music, and more importantly, who had been outside when my brother opened the door. In this house, my sister, my brother, and I lived in for many years with my grandparents. My grandfather passed away, devastating us all. After this, my grandmother spent a whole lot less time in this house. I believe it was too painful. Now, as anyone in my family can tell you, my grandfather was less than perfect. Being an ex-minor, he had very old-fashioned beliefs when it came to women. Oddly enough, this view was never pushed onto myself. He always pushed me to be strong and stand up for myself. And so, he would expect dinner on the table at 5 o'clock and the TV to be left on for him to watch it. And then he would have a few drinks and go to sleep. Please keep in mind that this was after hard days working on the house. On one particular night, my grandmother had caused an argument and my grandfather threw his plate across the living room and it smashed against the wall. Sad to say my brother and I had become used to this kind of event. Then, the argument continued in the kitchen, where he put his fist through the glass top table, smashing it as well. I will always remember this day being July 20th, two days before my birthday. A year or so after his passing, my brother, sister, and I were sitting in the living room watching television. We were startled to hear a smashing sound coming from the very same room. We turned the light on and looked around. There were no pictures missing from the room. The dog had immediately hid under the coffee table, something he used to do when Grandfather used to get really mad. 
My brother shook it off and said that maybe it was the neighbors throwing things and the noise carried. I agreed and walked into the kitchen to get a drink. I was more than shocked to see my grandfather's cup sitting in front of the kettle. The sugar pot and the tea bag were setting out too. I put these things away and put a glass on the table and turned to the fridge to get some milk. My brother walked into the kitchen, yelped. Then I heard another smashing sound. I turned to see the glass I had just placed on the center of the table so it had not fallen off a mere chance, smashed on the floor underneath the table, directly below where it had just been. It almost looked like it had fallen through the table. It was then, my brother said, July 20th, and I remember that the table my grandfather had broken had been in exactly the same place. I think that he was so angry that night that he left behind some kind of energy that reenacted the same event that next year. At least I'd like to believe this, because I don't think he would purposely scare us. On another note, our family moved and now live with my boyfriend. One night I was lying in bed thinking about whether or not my grandfather would have liked my boyfriend. His opinion had always mattered most to me, and the smell of tobacco and brandy entered the room. I felt a huge sadness mixed with happiness in my chest. My boyfriend smelled it too, and he asked about it. Neither one of us smoked. That night, I thought I had a dream, but maybe it was more than a dream. My grandfather appeared, and I started crying, saying I knew he wasn't supposed to be here. He smiled and nodded and said, don't worry, it's fine, and hugged me. He said he'd look after me, and that's all I've ever wanted. Since then, I've had a strange peace knowing that he has passed on and is truly happy. For as long as I can remember, I've been able to feel and see spirits that no one else could. It took me many years to discover what this ability was and that I wasn't alone. I don't remember my first ghostly experience very well, but my mother does. She told me the story many times. I was three, and we were visiting my grandmother at her home in East Boston. I walked into the back bedroom, my grandmother's bedroom, and then back into the dining room. I asked my grandmother about the man in her room. She asked me to describe him. So I did. She turned to my mother and quietly said, She has a gift. She handed me a photograph of her and my deceased grandfather and asked me if that was the man. I said yes, but he was skinnier now. My grandfather died of a brain aneurysm and complications from a bout of meningitis in 1952, 34 years before I was born. I live in a small city in Canada. I had a few incidences that occurred when I was probably 9 or 10. My other sister at the time would have been five or six. My grandfather was in the hospital with a brain tumor. The doctors had operated and removed it via surgery, but my grandfather remained quite sick. The hospital decided to send him home to die in peace. The night he died, my sister was sleeping in my mom's room, which we all did when we were that young. My mom was sound asleep, and she felt my sister sit up in bed and heard her talking to someone. My mom said that Heather had her eyes closed but had a slight smile on her face and a subtle glow about her. My mom watched, and a few short minutes later, Heather just laid back down and continued to sleep. In the morning, Heather said that Grandfather had came to her and talked to her. She said he was floating at the end of the bed and told her not to be sad, that he was happy and free. We still own the bed that my grandpa died in, but we really had no use for it since my sister and I shared bunk beds, so we put it in the guest room. When my sister decided a few years later that she wanted her own room, my parents moved her into the spare room. Now, me and Heather shared a room. Jen, my older sister, who had moved into the spare room, found it very uneasy to sleep in her new room, but my parents dismissed it as just not being used to being by herself at night, which would make sense. She would often tell me that there was she would always feel like someone was watching her sleep. When she would wake up in the morning, the light in her closet would be on, even though she knew she had turned it off. She only slept in the spare room for a few months until she wanted to move downstairs, because she said it was too grown up to sleep upstairs. I moved into the spare room, because I wanted my own room. I too felt as though someone was watching me, but it was oddly a very comforting feeling, so I didn't mind. On occasion, my closet light would be on in the mornings, though I too knew that I'd turned it off the night before. Years passed, and Jen moved to Calgary, and I moved out with a friend. At this time, I had a room built 
into the basement of my mom's house. So I moved down there and got a new, bigger bed. However, when I moved out, my bed was too big and too much of a hassle to move. So I took the old single one from the spare bedroom. The first night I slept in my own house, in my, in my old bed, I was feeling quite uneasy about being there without my family. When I decided to go to sleep after our housewarming party, I laid down in my bed. And a sense of reassurance seemed to wash over me. It was kind of creepy to have that feeling again. But it doesn't scare me, because I know that if it's anything at all, it was just my grandfather watching over us, making sure we were safe. A second incident also happened to Heather. My older sister and I were home babysitting one day. We were teasing her and had locked her in her room to scare her. She was screaming and screaming but we just held the door closed and laughed, and then she stopped yelling. We let her out, and she said that she had seen our great Aunt Janet rising through the floor and through the ceiling of her room. Our Aunt Janet had also just died after a very painful battle with cancer. When I was 10 or 11, my Grandpa Jim died of a heart attack. It was very sudden. He was mowing the lawn, had some chest pain, and was standing in the driveway joking with paramedics when it happened. He was removed from life support the following day, when it was clear that he was brain dead. For years after he died, I always felt him around me, particularly when I was visiting my grandparents' home. Maybe it was wishful thinking on my part. However, what I didn't know until years afterward is that both my grandma and my uncle saw and talked to my grandpa after he had died. Let me first state that neither is into the paranormal or anything. They're both two very ordinary working class folks from Iowa. My uncle apparently only shared the story with my dad and my grandma. Of course, after my dad told me, I had to ask my uncle myself. He said that on two occasions, during periods of stress, Grandpa Jim appeared to him in the living room, dressed as he always did, and talked to him about my uncle's problems. I'm not clear if Uncle Tom had been napping right before the events occurred, but he said that when the conversations were over, He found himself standing in the middle of the room. Tom, my uncle, said that on both occasions he asked Grandpa why he had to die so young. He was only 60. And that Grandpa just turned and walked away and disappeared. My Grandma said that one day she was in the garage going through some junk and looked up and there was Grandpa. He said, how's it going, honey? And disappeared. Incidentally, the garage was one of my Grandpa's favorite places to hang out and tinker around. For days after he died, the neighbor's dog, who used to hang out in the garage with Grandpa, kept stopping by and acting strangely. Maybe maybe she could still see him, or maybe she was just wondering where he was. Also, on the five-year anniversary of his death, which is also my son's birthday, my dog Ralph was going nuts in the basement. He and my Grandpa got along really well. I went to see what was the matter, and Ralph just kept jumping and barking at the wall. There was nothing there. I have never seen him behave like that. Although, I mean, I suppose there could have been a mouse behind the wall that I didn't know about. Lastly, I've had dreams about my grandpa, where he comes to talk to me about my problems. One dream took place in my elementary school. The other dream was on an escalator. We just sort of talk. I don't know if any of this even means anything. Also, sometimes I talk out loud to him about my problems I'm having. When I do, my two couch potato cats will start looking around wildly as if they see something that I can't. I kind of hope that Grandpa Jim is there for me.